What's going on guys? Ton of Chelsea news to discuss today. Let's get right into it, bro. No long intro. We're just gonna start talking about all the news. Obviously, the big news of the day is about Jaden Sancho possibly coming to Chelsea. And this honestly inspired me to make this Chelsea news video because besides that fact, the regular news has been going on. We've been talking about Victor Osiman for what seems like the best of two years now. There's the same developing news that we've seen in the past days. This guy is probably going to go to Saudi because they're the club willing to offer him the money that he wants and willing to offer Napoli the money that they want. But there's still a possibility that Chelsea get him in the end of the transfer window if one of the two parties, either Chelsea, Napoli, and Victor Osiman, folds and accept the other party's conditions. Uh, obviously, Chelsea do still need to get a lot of players out of the club that they basically confirmed will not be in the manager's plans for the rest of his time at Chelsea. And honestly, man, big news of the day, Jadon Sancho. Let's get to it, man. So you see it right on screen that this guy is being linked to Chelsea. The reason why is because Man United need to get rid of this guy. He's on massive wages. He's not in Eric Ten Hag's plans. And he's unhappy at the club. The three recipes for disaster if he ends up staying at Man United. It's just going to be a toxic thing in the Man United dressing room that no party will be happy if he stays. So who is captain Seva Sancho it's Chelsea in this case but we kind of have a good reason as to why we're doing this and as you can see here Fabrizio Romano states that the only way Chelsea will sign Jadon Sancho is if Man United take a player for them in return so it's kind of like are both parties going to be happy well this is what has to happen you have to take one of our players that we don't want and in return you get one of their players that they don't want in this case Raheem Sterling is pictured, obviously. He's one of the players that Chelsea do not want. We could offer Trevo Chalaba, who I'd be completely against offering to Man United because I think he's quality and he'd improve their team. Um, we have Armando Broya, a little bit of a lopsided offer there. I think we would have to offer money plus Broya for Sancho. Uh, besides him, who do we have available to offer? Ben Chilwell, maybe they'd be willing to take that. They have left-back injury problems for days. They're playing Diogo Dalo at left-back. Luke Shaw and Malasia cannot stay fit whatsoever. So I see it being one of those two. Now, am I opposed to getting Jadon Sancho in at Chelsea? A part of me honestly says yes. A part of me that says yes is because whenever he's not wearing a Borussia Dortmund kit, he's been awful. He's been awful for Man United. His career at Man United has not been what everyone has expected to be, and that's stating the obvious, obviously. Um, he's overweight at Man United, so it'd take him at least a month to get in proper shape to fit into Chelsea which you need to be in good shape if you want to compete for trophies which is the objective and I don't know man I think there's a lot of distractions in London Sancho seems like a guy who's easily distracted and he doesn't seem like the right personality fit for the squad that Chelsea need right now we honestly need someone with experience we need we don't need another guy that's going to join the Mandem FC and start acting like Noni Madueke uh, and all these guys throwing up gang signs in the team pictures listen this guy's a baller no doubt about it unbelievable raw talent but i don't think his mentality is there to do it in the premier league at least he needs to be at a place where he's loved where he has a good chemistry with the fans and if it starts going wrong for sancho at chelsea we already know when players don't do well at chelsea the fans express it very clearly and i don't think sancho could handle that type of criticism which is why i think the best move for him would be to go abroad now uh, it's difficult, man. It's very difficult because, according to Pletty Gold, Chelsea and Juve are still exploring the deal to sign Sancho, but this would be in deadline day. Listen, there are some positives to bringing in Jaden Sancho. Obviously, unbelievable quality on the ball. Doesn't work very hard when he doesn't want to be at a club, but when he does want to be at a club, he works extremely hard like we saw at Dortmund. So it's a very risky signing. I think he would be accepting to take a wage cut. It is Even if he didn't take a wage cut, it would be less substantial than the fee that Raheem Sterling is currently owning, oh, uh, earning from Chelsea. Sorry, I can't freaking talk. But um, listen, I'm not opposed to bringing in even more quality up top, but there's definitely going to be some players that are very unhappy with this signing, and it's likely going to be Mikhailo Mudrik. But listen, would you rather take, I'm asking you guys honestly, Mudrik or Sancho, who would you rather gamble on and give that opportunity to be the backup left winger for the team? In all honesty... I'm going with Jaden Sancho, bro, and this is no diss to Mudrik. I just don't think he's going to develop into that player we all expect him to be. I hope he does. He has all the mentality in the world to be one of the best wingers in world football. But does he have the footballing IQ to back that up? I don't think so. And footballing IQ is something that takes 
quite a long time to learn and i i don't have the patience for that man sancho at the very least he's english he knows what it means to be in and around all these players he probably knows all these players from his youth days growing up playing footy and we've seen Jaden Sancho reach a very top level in his career prior to that. So we know what we can expect from him in the future and what levels he could potentially reach. With Mudrik, it's a freaking gamble year after year. We do not know if this guy is ever going to improve. I hope he does because not only do we spend a freaking ton of money, but we're putting a lot of expectations on this guy and we hope he could deliver because if he does, he could be such a good player. But let me know what you guys think of that Sancho news as we move on to the next thing, would you take him at Chelsea and under what conditions, who would you send over to Man U? For me, it's either Raheem Sterling or Ben Chilwell. Now, Victor Osimhen news, like I said, nothing breaking. This news is honestly kind of exhausting and we all feel it, but I'm just going to touch on it real quick just to make sure we're all on the same page about what's the latest news regarding this unbelievable striker that every Chelsea fan wants. According to Le Parisien, the rumors, despite them, Jadon Sancho or Victor Osimhen will not join PSG. So PSG is off the table for both of these guys because they've made it known to Osimhen's representatives last week that they won't reactivate contacts with Napoli for the striker. Good. Less competition for Osimhen, more of a chance for Chelsea to potentially get him in the end of the window. And this gets me to how exciting this Chelsea attack is and how much more exciting it would be if Nicholas Jackson right here, you take him out, for Victor Osimhen. Do I hate Jackson? No. I'm not criticizing Jackson. I think he's done okay for himself in his limited time in England that he's had so far. He's scored 16 Premier League goals now in one season and two games so far. That's pretty damn good, but Osimhen is just on another level and everyone freaking knows that. Imagine the possibilities with Osimhen, Palmer, Madueke, Pedro Neto, and Kunku, Felix, and then Jackson would be off the bench. Mark Yu developing under the wing of Victor Osimhen, a proper number nine who knows how to put the ball in the back of the net whenever he gets the chance or more often times than not. But yeah, this attack would cook. It would freaking cook with Osimhen, and that's the missing piece. Is it the missing piece that we need the most in this Chelsea team? No, it's not. Everyone knows that Chelsea's defense is awful. We need a proper leader center back, and we'll touch on that a little bit later in this video because there's one freaking available for very cheap, in fact free, that Chelsea need to hump to hop on right now if we want to improve our defense and save our defense for this season now more on the victor Osimhen story from fabrizio just going to touch on it real quick not that big of a deal he keeps reiterating the same damn news about him every day uh napoli basically agreed to sell him for 65 million euros to al ali uh but Osimhen has no agreement so far with them at all because he wants an important salary and his agent has stated multiple times that Osimhen wants to stay in europe to prove that he's one of the best in the world now this gets me to the difficult situation chelsea we all know we could afford 65 million euros for victor Osimhen. the thing is we're not willing to pay his salary a player that we would be willing to pay his salary is john duran and apparently chelsea he remains an option for us until the end of the window as he says on playback to keep an eye on him because he's on our table still he's an option on the table listen john duran i don't doubt he's a player with potential but I don't think he's even better than Nicholas Jackson, bro. Yes, he scored a wonderful day, a wonderful uh, opening game goal for Aston Villa in, the, in their game that they won against West Ham United. But that doesn't justify us making this guy our main striker that we bring in this window just because he scored a couple of goals in the Premier League so far. Um, would I be opposed to bringing this guy in? No, because I do think we still do need another number nine besides Nicholas Jackson. Felix can play as a false nine, but am I going to put my trust in Felix to be our goal scorer for the year? I'm not. I'm being realistic. That guy's not a goal scorer. But come on, man. Come on, Chelsea. Show some ambition in the last days. Please, the fans, bring in a proper center back and bring in Victor Osimhen instead of Jean Duran. Come on, dude. Cut, cut the BS, bro. Okay. So this is what Chelsea have to do in five days. I don't know how they... If they do it, fair play to them, but I don't think... All of these are all of these futures are going to be solved. This is what we have to sort out by Friday: Dorda Petrovic, Ben Chilwell, Trevo Chalaba, Carney Chukwemeka, Cesar Casade, Omari Kellyman, Angelo Gabriel, Raheem Sterling, David Washington, Armando Broya. That's ten. David Datrofofana, eleven, and possibly Mark Gu, who we won't, we won't count for now because he has played some games. He looks like he is part of Mariska's plans. 
But 11 players. Futures we have to sort out by Friday. This doesn't include Kepa Riza Balaga, who probably is going to join Bournemouth very soon, but it's not 100% confirmed. This doesn't include Romelu Lukaku, who is probably going to join Napoli in the next days. Almost confirmed, but not 100% confirmed. That's 13 players we technically still have on our books. Listen, with Petrovic, the solution is so clear, but obviously we're not going to go for it. He should be our starting number one goalkeeper. For Chilwell, I respect Maresca. He doesn't fit into his plans. And this is one of the only outgoings that I truly do believe is Maresca driven because he's just not going to play. Uh, Trevor Chalaba, obviously pressure from the board to sell this guy. We took away his squad number, so he won't be playing for Chelsea for the rest of this year. Insane disrespect towards Trev, one of our, if not the best center back we have available at the club. I don't know. I, I think he will end up leaving. He's probably the most likely to leave Chelsea because teams will be interested in a top center back that is Trevor Chalaba. Carney Chukomeka, I see him leaving on loan. I don't think any team will buy him on a permanent. Cesar Cazade, but he is on very big wages apparently because Todd Bowley did sign him when he was sporting director. So we'll see what the hell happens with him. Cesar Cazade, probably going to leave on loan. I don't think he'll be used by Maresca this season. Omari Kellyman. I see him staying because we just signed him. I don't see him leaving. Angelo Gabriel, he has to go on loan. He's not ready yet for Chelsea first team. He's pretty close there. He's pretty close to that level, but um, I think a, I think a Strasbourg move wouldn't be bad. Uh, Raheem Sterling, I think Raheem Sterling should um should get the hell out of Chelsea. He's such a liability, so inconsistent. Hopefully, we manage to sell him to either Juventus or to Manchester United because. We took away his squad number already, so it'd be pretty hypocritical to end up keeping him around with no squad number, just collecting 300,000 pounds a week. We'll see what happens with him. David Washington, not ready for Chelsea first team. Sent him down to the development squad. Armando Broya, Ipswich Town move failed and broke down. Then we had a here we go. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. Dacia Fofana, haven't heard of him ever since he came back from his loan at Burnley. Who the hell knows? And then Mark Yu, obviously, if we do bring in Ossiman, I see him maybe leaving on loan. But yeah. Even myself talking about this, I'm starting to get stressed out. And I am <laughs> i don't have any ties to Chelsea, any responsibility on dealing with the futures of these players. So imagine how the club must be feeling right now. But they put themselves in this situation. Clown-ass owners. Now, as for Armando Broya, it's understood Ipswich are going back in for him because the move has not been completely ruled out. We'll see if this is true or not by the end of this window. I have a feeling he will leave, though. I have a feeling we'll get it done, especially because he's pure profit. Chelsea want that pure profit by any means necessary. Same thing with Chevro Chalaba. Apparently, Atalanta tried to sign him, but the cost was very high. $30 million for Chalaba is not very high at all. I think that's a very reasonable fee. Uh, Romelu Lukaku, according to Fabrizio, who's been kind of shaky in terms of his reliability these past few weeks, he says there's no issues no problems for Lukaku's move to Napoli from Chelsea, and that it's just a matter of documents being checked and contracts being reviewed ahead of his travel for medical tests. Uh, he also says he's been in touch with Conte almost every day since Friday. His daddy, we'll see, man. We'll see if this ends up being true or not, but more likely than not, this one is going to be true. So hopefully it goes through. As for Kepa to Bournemouth, we saw a couple of days ago that Chelsea are closing in to sign... Uh, sorry, Bournemouth are closing in to sign him from Chelsea. The crazy thing is we're going to have to extend his contract for another year because if we don't, he's going to end up being a free agent once he comes back from his loan move. So Kepa, another year at Chelsea. He's been here since 2018. What is that going to be? Seven seasons he's a Chelsea player by the time he returns from his Bournemouth loan. Uh, if all good later today, Kepa's going to travel there for medical tests. Listen, good move for Kepa. We'll even start there because I genuinely think Neto is a better goalkeeper than him, but we'll see. And he's the club captain. Just glad to get that guy out of the dressing room. So toxic, man. Now, we released our third kit, and guys, I'm copying this kit. I can't tell you how beautiful this kit looks. It looks unbelievable. The The announcement for this kit was very, very freaking cringe. It was like some punk rock star type theme where they had Moises Caicedo biting a chain and then these weird-ass freaking people with tattoos and spikes all over their body repping the Chelsea the Chelsea kit it just looked very very weird it kind of threw me off but if we leave all the advertising to the side and just analyze the kit for what it is it's a beautiful kit I don't even care what sponsors in the front of it it looks unbelievable and it's going to be our third kit I'm copying this it looks very very good beautiful kit by Chelsea now this is the center back I was talking about Matt Hummels 
We also see that they're closing in on signing him for free, according to Fabrizio Romano. The formal proposal has already been sent and expected to be and expected to be accepted. Tongue twister. Final details being sorted with Sociedad. Confident to get the green light and announce Hummel soon. Oh my God! If Chelsea have any ambition, go and get Mats Hummels as a free agent signing, even if it's for one season. I guarantee our defense will tighten up so much. I don't care if this guy replaces Badia Shield, Axel Di Sassi. Those players are not good enough to take Chelsea to the levels we want to be at. If we want to be at those levels, we know who to bring in. And Hummels is that player, bro. I'm sure Maresco would love this guy in, in his defense. He'd bring so much security to the back line. We see how good of a player he still is. He was unbelievable for Dortmund in their UCL run. This would literally be a perfect Thiago Silva replacement if we were to bring him in. We'll see. It... It'd be a miracle if Chelsea end up going for this guy in the next few days. But yeah, I'd love this for I'd love for that to happen. Let me know what you guys think. Would you take Hummels at the club? Now, Federico Chiesa, this was probably the biggest news of the day in terms of world football because uh Liverpool wants to sign him apparently. He's available for 15 million, which is a crazy low fee for a player that of Chiesa's quality. Understandably, he does have tons of injury issues, but still I think it's a risk most clubs should be willing to take because he honestly p could play a pretty big role in Liverpool this season, especially if Diaz gets injured again. Um, he's excited about this possibility and the contract won't be an issue, according to Fabrizio. The deal is on. Listen, I would rather Chelsea go for a swap move of Sterling to Juventus and get Chiesa in return. Tell me that wouldn't be a better deal than going for Jadon Sancho. Left winger proper left winger excels in that position is he as versatile as a player that Maresca would want no he's purely a left winger if i'm being completely honest but he would offer some good competition in the squad he's a little bit older i think he's 25 26 years old i wouldn't mind that at all and it would be an upgrade on on mudrick for being completely honest and there's going to be some competition for him because apparently uh his agent has expressed to barca that he's open to joining the club and would be willing to go there but it depends on Barca's decision as they're considering several options while Juventus are waiting for an official bid why not send in a cheeky swap deal with Sterling or with Chilwell I think I think we could benefit from getting Chiesa in at the bridge let me know what you guys think is it too much of a risk to take especially with his injury uh with his injury history now on to the last pieces of news before we end the video we see Barca's interested in Chiesa apparently but Jesus Christ, they barely registered their only signing that they've made in this transfer window. Danny Olmo, 65 million. They barely registered him to be able to play. And they didn't even do it in the right way. Their only way they've registered Olmo is because Andreas Christensen got injured. So they won't need to register him until December. Uh, he can debut tomorrow. <laughs> oh my God. The way that club runs is an absolute mess. I forgot who said it, but there was a footballer that played for, for Barcelona and Manchester City. Not Gundogan, I forgot who it was, but he basically... St oh, Claudio Bravo. It was Claudio Bravo, the goalkeeper. I know you guys remember him. Um, he said that Barcelona, from the outside looking in, looks like a massive club. The institution, the way the club is ran. People think, oh my goodness, they must be doing everything at the highest level. But he says that's the case with Manchester City, not with Barcelona. He said Barcelona is ran like a very small club indoors. They have very few people working out details for deals. Very few people working out the logistics. The same guys you see there their whole entire life. And they are not very organized. That's what Claudio Bravo, the man that won a Champions League with Barcelona nine years ago, is saying. I think that's pretty reliable. And it's probably true based on all this ridiculous news we've heard. With Barca going Xavi out, then Xavi in, and then Xavi out again. With Barca not being able to register Omo, not being able to afford Nico Williams. And they're the biggest club in the world, according to Juan Laporta. Crazy, crazy gaslighting by by the club president thinking Barca is the biggest team in the world right now when clearly it's Real Madrid. Now, as for little pride right here, Santi Jimenez, Mexican player. You guys might not know, I am half Mexican. Uh, according to Fabrizio, he's pretty close to joining Nottingham Forest. I would love this. I love to see Mexican players at the top level in world football. And if you guys don't know this guy... He bangs in goals in the Eredivisie. Yes, I know, I know. The Eredivisie isn't the, the most exciting league in the world, the most challenging league. But I'm happy, man. I hope this guy does end up coming to the Premier League. The only thing is that Nottingham Forest squad is so fickle. There you have 
55 freaking players available. Their starting lineup changes every season. I don't know how much game time this guy will get, but if they're willing to invest that sum of money, he's surely going to be a starter, right? Over Awoni, you would expect him to, but we'll see. 2001 born, I think he's 23 years old now. Good move for him, in my opinion. Good step up from the Eredivisie. I'd love to see him in the Prem. Now, as for Enzo Maresca, this guy's a breath of fresh air, guys, and we should be kind of happy that this guy is our manager because he speaks the truth, and the truth that he speaks is very refreshing to hear. It's so much better than the being around the bush that Graham Potter, that Pochettino, that all these guys would do whenever they were asked difficult questions. He was asked about Madueke, and he still managed to criticize him and find... Well, not criticize him, but he still managed to find things that he would like Madueke to improve on. Literally, the press conference... In the press conference, after he scored a hat trick for us against Wolves, this is the type of straightforwardness that these young players need. They need someone that's going to hold them accountable to their mistakes and make them improve. That's what's going to make them improve and make them mature as players. So, very happy with what he said. Obviously, he says here, we can avoid a free kick that he gave away before halftime that Malueke did. He pays attention to those little details, man. He doesn't let anything slide. Good news by Maresca. Kind of glad... He's speaking out in the way that he is. Now, Omo obviously registered. Last thing we're going to discuss very quickly. This video is freaking 21 minutes already. We'll discuss for like two minutes. These are the Chelsea ratings for FC25. And oh my god, this has got to be, in terms of FIFA or FC, whatever the hell you call it now, the worst Chelsea I've ever seen. Um, our highest rated player is 85, Cole Palmer. I think even though he got a plus 29 upgrade or 19 ratings, he still needs to be at least a walkout. Come on, EA. At least 86 for Cole Palmer. Do us that favor because... And the pace, too. Cole Palmer is faster than 75 pace. Let's be honest. He's not He's not fast. He's not slow either, though. He deserves at least an 80 rating. Uh, and Kunku, do I agree with this downgrade? I think minus 2 was a little too much. Um, I think he could have kept the 85 at least, but understandably so. He was injured for basically the whole year, but when he did play, he scored goals. So kind of weird from EA there. Kukuriya deserved upgrade. Looks like a pretty balanced card. Would look better as a midfielder, in my opinion, with those stats. Enzo Fernandez downgraded by one. Uh, understandably so. Didn't have the best of seasons last year. Obviously played with an injury. Had his few moments that were good, but besides that, lacks consistency. Reese James, another downgrade. Minus one. Barely played. Played okay when he did. Understandable. Moises Caicedo, well-deserved upgrade. One of our most consistent players last season. I'm glad he did get upgraded, and yeah, good to see Big Moy in the 82s. Raheem Sterling, obviously well-deserved downgrade, doesn't count as a Chelsea player anymore, though. Malagusto, 80 rating I think is fair. I think that's fair for Gusto. He was one of the best up-and-coming right-backs in the world last season, but for a right-back to break the 80 rating and go higher than that, they have to be pretty damn good in, in FC, so pretty good for there. Joel Felix, this one I'm kind of surprised with. He doesn't look like a very good card. He will be because he has 5-star skills, 4-star weak foot, and flair, but... Um, 80 rating for Felix is kind of crazy that he's one rating higher than Robert Sanchez. Uh, yeah, listen, I think these ratings are pretty fair. Madueke, after yesterday's performance, should be an 81, 82, if I'm being honest. Colwell, pretty fair. Mudrik deserved uh, 77, doesn't deserve much higher than that. Jackson, I think he could have been an 81. I think Jackson could have been an 81. Pedro Neto, at least in the 80s. Come on, man, he's better than 79. Uh, but yeah, besides that, not too mad at those ratings. I think the the top line is pretty accurate, except for Palmer and Nkunku. And you could argue Felix could be higher. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of the video from today. Uh, all the news, Jaden Sancho, Ben Chilwell, Sterling, the outgoings, the incomings. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. More videos coming out soon. And yeah, take care, guys. Peace.